So if not, so we're going to move on to the to the next talk. It's going to be presented by uh, Dr. Adebari Adeliki from uh, Modibo Adama University of Technology in Nigeria. Adebari, please, uh, if you can, you have 15 minutes. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's on. It's not on full screen. Okay. Oh, can you see? Can you see me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good day to you all. My name is Adibari Johnson Adeleke. I'm from Mudibadama University of Technology, in Nigeria. I uh, would like to appreciate the organizers of this program for selecting me as one of the young scientists to participate in this um, webinar series. I'll be talking on bioethanol production from petrified sugarcane baggers under optimized conditions using selected fungi. Um, the last speaker has actually done a good introduction, but let me just quickly go over what I have. Um, we need biofuel in order to provide an alternative to um, fossil fuel, which is a very common energy source we use globally now, but with quite a number of challenges, environmental challenges. Um, we need um, energy sources that are renewable um, and um, for some reasons to combat pollution and climate uh, change. We need a uh, buff well. We also need it so that um, we can make provision for higher energy demand because it has been uh, uh, predicted that the world population is going to increase to up to 10 billion in the, the year 2050. So we, we need to make a uh, preparation for such huge population that will demand for energy, more energy. And we also need to secure energy supply by having more alternatives rather than only fossil fuel. Uh, there has been um, first generation of buffers that were produced uh, using uh, food materials, but because of the challenges of food security, it has been uh, proposed that it is better for bioethanol or buffers to be produced from waste materials. And um, we, of course, the waste materials have their own challenges too, especially the lignocellulosic materials. Um, let me quickly take you to the through the con bulk conversion of. Um, in my own case, I use uh, sugarcane baggers for my experiments, and um, the general procedure of uh, converting uh, the agro agro waste to ethanol involves uh, the pretreatment, which is a process where uh, the structure of the of the lignocellulosic material is um, actually broken in such a way to create more space uh, to increase the surface area for the next, uh, next um, process, which is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, you know, um, is a process where it's a stage at which enzymes act on the polymeric structure of the material in order to, uh, to, to break it down to monomers, which appropriate, yeast, uh, appropriate organisms can then, uh, um, can, be, can then ferment to heat and all. Um, the problem that I try to solve, the sugar cane baggers are, uh, is a major waste uh, from sugar, sugar industry and constitutes disposal problem in the environment. The baggers is known to contain cellulose and hemicellulose, which can be converted to bioethanol. However, the recalcitrant nature of plant biomass demands optimal pretreatment method to make sugar components available for enzymatic the polymerization and finally converted to bioethanol. The use of sugarcane baggers as feedstock for bioethanol production would help to provide safer and cleaner way of waste disposal. And um, the microorganisms isolated from natural environment may also contain metabolic abilities of industrial importance. Uh, the main aim of the study was to optimally treat sugarcane baggers and to identify appropriate fungi for enhanced uh, bioethanol yield. 
the object objectives are to isolate screen and identify cellulose and hemicellulose degrading modes and yeast capable of fermenting exos and pentose to study the fermentative profile of yeast isolated to be treat and hydrolyze sugarcane baggers to release maximum quantities of releasing sugar to ferment sugarcane baggers hydrolysate to ethanol using single and consortium of, of yeast. Um, in the experiment, I isolated um, yeast and molds from a sugarcane bagger samples, which I collected from a dump site of a sugar industry here in Nigeria. And the, the molds were screened for production of cellulases and uh, xylanase. And the yeast were also tested for the ability to grow in uh, exos and pentose sugars. The organisms, uh, the selected organisms were um, identified using molecular characterization. Um, um, I also, also tested um, some few nitrogen sources to select the ones that are good, uh, that can work with the organisms uh, in order to convert um, laboratory um, um, glucose or xylose to ethanol. I also tried to see how much um, the, the organisms, the yeast can, uh, can tolerate different uh, concentrations of glucose and also check their tolerance rates to ethanol because the different concentrations of ethanol. I also pretreated um, using uh, potassium hydroxide before I went ahead to do my enzymatic hydrolysis and uh, I also tried to hydrolyze using the fungi directly. I optimized the pretreatments using the uh, response surface methodology and then um, morphological examination of pretreated baggers also was done using scanning the electron microscope. Fermentation of the hydrolysis was done using monoculture and culture of selected yeast and testing some other parameters too. Saccharum and uh, the other method for fermentation which I used was the SSL, the saccharification and fermentation of sugarcane baggers. Fermentation efficiency was calculated using the formula displayed here. So I measured, I uh, used the DNS method to measure sugarcane and reducing sugar, uh, with gas chromatography to measure uh, ethanol. Okay. So in whole, I was able to isolate uh, about 120 yeast and uh, 21 modes. And um, um, these are um, some of the uh, iso modes, the filamentous um, isolates. The, the codes here stands for the uh, isolates, the isolate codes, um, which I <coughs> tested for. Sorry, please, for the enzyme activities. Um, so in this experiment, a particular isolate, which was XY, was able to give more of the three enzymes tested, endoglucanase, the three enzyme acid four, which are the endoglucanase, beta glucosidase, um, xylanase. And um, here is a table of um, yeast which are testing them for the ability to utilize exos and pentose sugar. This was done on a solid uh, solid Hager and um, they were scored based on their ability to grow well. And um, actually, all, as we all know, usually most yeast can ferment glucose very, they can grow on glucose medium very excellently, but just um, only one, which is Y5, was able to grow well on xylose, while the others have um, some kind of weak um, growth. This is the uh, identities of the isolate with the accession numbers. Uh, this uh, table three shows the effect of urea uh, on the conversion of glucose and the uh, glucose to and xylose to ethanol by yeast. Here I used um, um, laboratory glucose, refined glucose and xylose for this experiment. Uh, the result is more than this, for, but for the purpose of this presentation, I selected just few isolates uh, to make this presentation. And in this, um, you can see that all the, virtually all the organisms, the, the, the four yeast, they all performed well, converting uh, 
glucose, the first table to ethanol with almost close to 100% efficiency. But in the, the second table, the, uh, the second part, which is the B, um, is only one isolate, Y5, uh, which was actually identified as Candida tropicalis that was able to give us a reasonable um, amount of um, ethanol yield from xylose, pure xylose. So here is uh, the figures showing the different glucose concentrations on the growth of, of yeast. Is it, it is very important that um, this yeast isolate can actually tolerate a high um, a concentration of glucose so that because usually in the presence of high um, glucose, the organism can be inhibited from um, going ahead to a, 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 a growing and uh, fermenting what we will what we want them to ferment. So here it's uh, obvious that the, 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 the organism, the three organisms, the three yeasts were able to do well um, in uh, all the concentrations uh, because uh, the lag phase did not proceed more than 12 hours because uh, this is 60 hours experiment. So after 12 hours, the organism grew and were able to grow very well. Uh, in the different concentrations of uh, the glucose. Uh, this show this is the, the ethanol, um, the different concentrations of ethanol that were tested with the organisms. And um, uh, the, the organisms, the yeast, grew very well at different concentrations of the uh, ethanol. Uh, but after 15% ethanol, after 15% ethanol, uh, the, there was a kind of stress and uh, many of them at 20, there was virtually no growth, except these are uh, Candida tropicalis Wi-Fi that just had a little growth um, at 20%. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so here is the uh, treatment the P treatment experiment. Um, actually, we subjected these. These these are the ones we did manually, and um, we used them. Um, Potassium hydroxide at different concentrations uh, for the P treatment. Uh, we vary the time and also the temperature. Uh, as you can see, this is the tent run here, which is um, 120 minutes, um, 86 degrees Celsius, and 150 uh, milligram of um, potassium hydroxide per gram of bagasse uh, gave us the highest total reducing sugar, which was uh, 19. Um, gram per liter. So in this uh, figure six, we try to compare the result of the statistical uh, manipulation that was done, which um, I'm not uh, giving the details here, but based on the statistical uh, manipulation, uh, we have um, the RSM result um, 201, 11 minutes, 93 degrees Celsius, and um, potassium hydroxide of 162 milligram uh, per gram baggers to be the uh, best conditions for this P treatment. But based on the earlier experiment we did, we had this. So we tried to compare the two um, experiments um, from or the two conditions, set of conditions, and from what we got, um, that of response surface methodology, which was the statist statistical uh, method we used, if um, 600, 600 uh, milligram per gram um, but of uh, reducing sugar, why the other set of conditions gives one to seven, 570, which was actually not uh, so uh, significant in, the, in their difference. So this is another experiment here based on earlier, um, this figure seven, based on the earlier experiment on the modes, which are the filamentous fungi, um, a particular uh, um, fungus was chosen, which was Aspergillus niger XY, to, for the purpose of hydrolysis. We are looking for a way where we don't have to actually, we are just trying to start test. We don't have to actually purify uh, by just using the organism modes directly for, process, for the for process of um, hydrolysis. But um, unfortunately, this particular one was not a successful experiment because the highest uh, amount of reducing sugar that we got was just about 
19 uh, milligram per gram, which is also low compared to that. The very first experiment we used a commercial cellulase, which was supplied by NovoSign. So there was uh, such a huge difference. So we couldn't go ahead with uh, the live fungus. We concentrated on the commercial cellulase for further experiments. <clears throat> this is the uh, result of the scanning electro microscope, um, just to show the physical the structure of the baggers before and uh, after the treatment. And it can be seen uh, in the first figure, the first uh, image here, how the, um, the, the fiber, the, the, the material was still well together, arranged. But in the second one, uh, there was a kind of um, the stabilization in the structure of the baggers, which is as, a, as an effect of the um, pretreatment. So, Going to um, the fermentation experiment now, after the hydrolysis, um, I tested the effect of monoculture and co-culture of yeast on the ethanol production using uh, the bagger this time around, uh, but with a separate hydrolysis and fermentation. Three yeasts were chosen, the Y2, Y5, and Y10, because um, it's a white Y2, which was identified as a saccharomyces cerevisiae, Y5 was identified as um, tro Candida tropicalis, and um, Y2 was identified as uh, Pitcher pudiavzevi. So these three organisms uh, were chosen to test if uh, we can have a positive synergistic effect during the, the uh, fermentation of baggers to baggers adolescent to um, ethanol. So from here, um, Y10, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, gave the highest fermentation efficiency, but the ethanol yield was smaller, which is 8.65 um, gram per liter. But we have um, um, Candida tropicalis Y5 with this other two combination, Y2 and Y5, um, Y5 and Y10, and this, the one where we combine the three isolate, having a uh, higher ethanol yield, but lower um, fermentation efficiency. Uh, the explanation behind this is that this established that this Y10 was, couldn't actually um, assimilate much of uh, the xylose. It could only struggle to grow. Um, whereas in the presence of the Candida tropicalis, uh, xylose was being uh, assimilated uh, and converted to ethanol, but the rate at which the xylose aspect of the baggers was being converted to internal war, of course, uh, is relatively lower compared to that of um, um, glucose. So invariably, the saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is Y10, was only feeding on the glucose aspect of the uh, hydrolysate and uh, actually leaving the xylose behind. That was why uh, the, the fermentation efficiency uh, seems to be high. Whereas uh, we are interested in uh, a combination that we actually um, metabolize both the xylose and the glucose content of the of the hydrolysate and convert them as, uh, um, to ethanol. So from this uh, experiment, it was obvious that even the Candida tropicalis Y5, the result it gave were not significantly different from the other combinations. So we decided to do away with others uh, in some of the following experiments. Uh, y 5 alone could actually uh, perform well on uh, sugarcane baggers. So this is the effect of addition of urea on ethanol production by Canada tropicalis Y5 through separate release and fermentation. And uh, we can see that um, when we had it, because sugarcane baggers is very low in uh, nitrogen, it's, uh, in fact, it's almost not, uh, uh, it's almost doesn't co co contain any uh, form of nitrogen. So it actually needs uh, its nitrogen to be supplemented. So um, in the presence of urea, we, the organism was able to give an, a yield of 18.5, 18, maybe uh, 19 gram per liter of ethanol uh, and uh, fermentation emission of 97. And then 
we also try to um, vary the temperature, the temperature of, um, of the fermentation procedure um, using 20 degrees Celsius, 35 and 42 degrees Celsius. And um, this uh, shows that uh, the best uh, temperature was uh, 35 degrees Celsius that gave us uh, ethanol yield of um, 18.9, uh, almost 19. Um, even though it's not really significant with the first one, which is 28. It's I mean, almost the same right. thing. Okay, thank you. Let me quickly round up. So we also, so we, uh, we also now uh, try to do ferment the baggers simultaneously. We 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 sacrifice uh, simultaneously uh, and sacrifice and ferment the petrated baggers simultaneously. Now in this case, because we have to have find a balance between the uh, enzyme and the yeast, the commercial enzyme which has a uh, an optimum condition of temperature condition of about 45 degrees Celsius, 50, uh, whereas the organism will perform optimally at around 35 degrees Celsius. So we are trying to find a balance. So that's why we had this um, temperature, this temperature regime, 35 degrees Celsius, intermittent, um, changing from 35 to uh, 45 degrees, and then 45. So in this, we had the best result of 30 degrees, uh, 30 gram per liter, of ethanol at 35 degrees Celsius. Now we are using uh, Candida Tropicalis Wi-Fi alone. So uh, in conclusion, okay, let me just um, give the highlights. Uh, the alkaline treatment with low concentration of KOH that we use is about 2.3 percent at 86 degrees Celsius. So 120 minutes give high reducing sugar yield of 600 milligram per gram baggers. With undetectable level of inhibitors. Yeah, we checked uh, inhibitors, and um, after the treatment, there were no inhibitors uh, found. Then, neutralization of baggers following alkaline treatment was achieved by a one step procedure. I didn't mention this. After our treatment um, with alkali, usually in some experiments, in many other experiments, what they do is to neutralize uh, the alkali treated baggers with. Water to wash it with water several times to neutrality. And um, instead of doing that, we neutralize using hydrochloric acid in order to um, reduce energy use at that process. And um, it actually worked for us. This study was able to make available a non carcinogenic yeast, Canada tropical is Wi Fi with good potential to convert both exos and pentose sugars to ethanol. I uh, would like to acknowledge uh, my supervisor, Professor S. E. Odufa of Department of Microbiology. Today he's retired, he's a retired professor now, University of Ibadan, Nigeria. I also would like to acknowledge Dr. Dimitris Ajias uh, Nicolaou, who hosted me in his laboratory in Greece, where I had access to uh, some equipment that are not readily available in Nigeria, the scanning electron microscope, gas chromatography, HPLC, and uh, some other equipment. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, we have, uh, if there are any questions. Oh, there is one question here from Igor. Please, Igor. Uh, Adibari, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Really nice. Uh, let me ask you, do you think you can or one can improve uh, efficiency of uh, fermentation if one adds xylose isomerase, for example, to the enzymatic mix. Because I understood that you tried to follow hydrolysis and fermentation using native uh, fungi. And uh, it's, uh, if, can you please come again? Yeah, you're not very audible. I can't hear you very well. Oh, OK. Can you hear me better now? OK. So basically, what I what I'm trying to ask is that uh, if we will improve conversion of xylose into xylulose, which probably will increase uptake of pentoses into yeast, do you believe that can increase the efficiency of fermentation of pentoses? Um, if I guess you well, uh, what, what I'm trying to say the other time is. When uh, pentose is introduced with glucose, 
it will most likely um, reduce the fermentation efficiency because the rate at which glucose is being converted to uh, ethanol is different at, uh, from the rate at which xylose is being converted. So that was why saccharomyces cerevisiae the other time was given a kind of, uh, maybe I don't want to say false, um, better fermentation efficiency because uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae was acting on the glucose content of the um, hydrolysate alone, why the other ones that were converting both the xylose and the glucose, uh, you know, the fermentation efficiencies work, so is being calculated based on the amount of reducing sugar that is consumed and at the rate at which the consumed um, or reducing sugar is converted to ethanol. So in a situation where uh, one of these is only consuming glucose and excellently converting it to ethanol, it will usually have a better uh, fermentation efficiency than an organism that is feeding on both um, glucose and xylose and, uh, not, uh, and uh, the rate at which the xylose is being converted is less, it's relatively less uh, compared to that of glucose. Okay. I don't know where, whether I actually got your question correctly. Are, are there any other questions? So if not, uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Debari, for your presentation. Uh, and we move on to the next speaker, which